power mpia, rises among the ten horns. Ya pembe kumi. He doesn't rise in Africa. Na, za he does not rise in Africa. Africa. He doesn't rise in the United States. He doesn't rise in Asia. Asia. He doesn't rise in South America. America he arises out of Rome. The four beasts. Babylon. Media to Persia. Greece. Rome. The divisions of the Roman Empire. And the little horn arises among these divisions. Or out of Rome. Secondly, the Bible said, he arises after the ten horns, after the divisions of Rome, in the 300s, 400s AD. He has eyes like the eyes of a man. In the Bible, what is a prophet called? What's a prophet called in the Bible? A prophet is called a seer. Why? Because he sees with God's eyes. He has divine wisdom. But this power that arises in Europe, out of Rome, in the early centuries would be based on human wisdom, not divine. There's one more thing, one more clue. The Bible says in Daniel 7 verse 8, Daniels, that this power is different than all the other powers. Babylon was a political power. Persia was a political power. Greece was a political power. Rome was a political power. The ten horns were political powers. Follow me closely. According to the Bible, out of Rome, they would arise in Europe in the early centuries a religious political power and this religious political power would speak great things based on human tradition and wisdom and what would this power do? Don't miss this. Daniel 7 verse 25. Daniel sura ya saba mstari wa 25. He shall speak great words against the Most High. Nasema ata nena maneno yali yikinyume ichake aliye juu. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Anasema ata wadhofisha watakatifu wake aliye juu. And he shall think. What does it say, everybody? He shall do what? Atazimu. Ata azimu. Yes, sir. Ata azimu. Ata azimu. He will think. Think. Yeah. To change times and laws. Kubadilisha magira na sheria. So a religious power would rise in the early centuries. And it would think to change the very law of God. Na kuazimu kubadilisha sheria ya mungu. But men and women following God's word would not accept that human tradition based on the teachings of man. They would stand with the law of God and stand with the true Bible Sabbath. Now if anybody knows the law Judges know the law. 
wa, kama ni swala la kujua sheria majaji na mahakimu wanajua sheria kama umeitwa kuingia mahakamani hapa Tanzania and you go before the judge na unasimama mbele ya jaji the judge is a specialist in the law jaji huwa ni mtaalamu katika sheria judge hector alvarez uh, jaji aliyetwa hector alvarez was a specialist in the law alikuwa mtaalamu katika sheria judge hector alvarez huyo jaji hector alvarez was a cuban judge alikuwa ni mwanadamu hakimu wa ujaji he was a communist alikuwa mkomunisti he was dedicated to communism alikuwa ni muumini wa ukomunisti and in those days in cuba na katika siku hizo kule cuba alipokuwa ilikuwa kinyume na sheria to openly share god's word kusambaza habari za neno la Mungu kwa uhuru Judge Hector Alvarez Huyu jaji Hector Alvarez loved to take Sabbath keeping Adventist pastors Alipenda kuwakamata wa Adventista wachungaji and put them in prison na kuwasweka magerezani He put many Adventist pastors in prison Aliwaweka wachungaji wengi wa Adventista magerezani One year mwaka wa kwanza 3 years miaka mitatu 5 years miaka mitano But after many years the judge saw jaji aliona that that system was destroying his country ya kwamba mfumo ule ulikuwa ukiharibu nchi yake so he fled as a refugee hivyo akakimbia kama mkimbizi he came to america akaja marekani came to miami florida akaja katika sehemu ya florida miami miami na wakati huu was a homeless man on the streets. Huyu jaji akawa asiye na makazi. One day, siku moja, sitting on the street corner. Akiwa ameketi mahali kwenye kona ya mtaa mmoja. A seventh day Adventist teenage boy saw him. Huyu kijana wa miaka 10 na kitu mu Adventista sabato akamuona. They began talking. Wakaanza kuzungumza. And the teenager recognized. Na huyu mwana kijana akatambua. This man is brilliant. Ya kwamba huyu mtu ana akili sana. The teenage boy's father was an Adventist pastor. Baba ya huyo kijana alikuwa mchungaji wa Adventist. And he said to the judge. Akamwambia jaji, he knew nothing about the judge's background. Hakujua lolote juu ya mazingira usuli ya huyo jaji. He didn't know. Hakujua that the judge. Ya kwamba huyo jaji Uh, had put Adventist pastors in prison. Alikuwa ameweka wachungaji wa Adventista gerezani. But he invited the judge home. Lakini alimkaribisha jaji nyumbani. And that pastor's wife. Na yule mama mchungaji. Made a wonderful meal for the judge. Akaandaa chakula kizuri kwa ajili ya huyo jaji. And once a week, na kila mara moja The judge kwa came to the pastor's home. Huyo jaji alikuja nyumbani kwa mama wa mchungaji. The judge spoke Spanish. Huyo jaji alikuwa akizungumza lugha ya Kispania. He was from Kispania. Cuba. He was from Cuba. Cuba. The pastor was not from Cuba but he spoke Spanish. Mchungaji alikuwa hatokei Cuba lakini alikuwa anazungumza Kispania. One day, the pastor learned mchungaji akatambua that this judge ya kwamba huyu jaji is from Cuba. Anatokea Cuba. And the pastor na mchungaji had a friend alikuwa na rafiki who was also a pastor ambaye pia alikuwa mchungaji an Adventist pastor mchungaji wa Adventist from Cuba aliyetokea Cuba so he said judge I want you to meet my friend nataka wewe uwe rafiki yangu so they came hivyo wakaja and they met wakakutana and the judge's mouth dropped na huyu jaji akabaki mdomo wazi because the judge had met that pastor before kwa sababu jaji huyu aliwahi kukutana na mchungaji huyu kabla in his courtroom katika mahakama yake in Cuba nchini Cuba and he sentenced him to prison na alikuwa amemhukumu kifungo Now he had no idea what the what the pastor would do. Sasa hakujua kwamba mchungaji atamtendea nini. The pastor said, "Judge." Mchungaji akamwambia jaji, "You owe me a special favor." Wewe una deni kwangu. You wewe put me in prison. Uliniweka gerezani. I want you ninakutaka wewe to come uje to a satellite meeting kwenye mkutano wa satellite with Pastor Mark Finley. Ambapo mchungaji Mark Finley And I want you to hear about the law. Nataka usikie juu ya sheria. You are a judge. Wewe ni jaji. You understand the law. Unaielewa sheria. So the judge said at least I can go to that meeting So the pastor brought him The judge being a very wise man akiwa mtu mwenye busara accepted Jesus akamkubali Yesu He said Jesus you've said if you love me keep my commandments Akasema Yesu ulisema ukilipenda utanishika amri zangu The judge accepted the Sabbath Jaji akaikubali Sabato When I made the appeal na nilipofanya wito The judge came forward to be baptized Jaji akatembea akaja mbele kwa ajili ya ubatizo and now the pastor mchungaji 
who was put in prison by the judge ambaye huyu jaji alimweka gerezani led that judge into the baptismal pool akamuongoza kuingia kwenye kisima cha ubatizo when they walked into the baptismal pool walipoingia kwenye kisima cha ubatizo the pastor raised his hand mchungaji akanyosha mkono wake juu and i said na nikasema to the judge nikamwambia jaji did you ever meet this pastor before uliwahi je uliwahi kukutana na mchungaji huyu kabla yes i met him akasema nam ndio where did you meet him wapi ulikutana naye i met him in cuba akasema nikutana naye cuba what did you do ulimfanyia nini i put this man in prison asema nilimweka huyu gerezani pastor mchungaji what are you going to do to the judge unajua nini juu ya jaji i baptize him in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit asema mimi ninambatiza katika jina la baba na mwana na roho mtakatifu Amen. Do you think that judge was a wise man? Je, unadhani yule jaji alikuwa mtu mwenye busara na hekima? Je, unadhani alikuwa na hekima? Judges know the law. Majaji wanaijua sheria. And when the judge, na wakati jaji discovered the law was changed by man. Alipogundua kwamba sheria ilibadilishwa na mwanadamu. Now you say how did that What, how did that change take place? Alihoje kwamba huu hii badiliko lilifanyikaje? What was the evidence that convinced the judge? Ni uthibitisho gani uliyomfanya huyu jaji akabidi? The Bible predicted. Biblia ilitabiri. In Daniel 7. Katika Daniel sura ya 7. That a power would rise out of Rome. Ya kwamba mamlaka itaibukia kule Rumi. A religious political power mamlaka ambayo ni ya kidini na kisiasa to change god's law ambayo itajaazimu kubadilisha sheria in daniel 8 verse 12 katika daniel 8:12 it says the truth of god would be cast to the ground inasema ukweli wa mungu utatupwa katika mchanga the truth about god's law ukweli juu ya sheria ya mungu how did this change hili nilibadilishwaje take place hili badiliko lilifanyika hili badiliko kutoka jumamosi kwenda jumapili lifanyika katika kanisa la kirumi declare that it made that change linatamka kwamba hilo liliweza kutendeka the change from sabbath to sunday badiliko kutoka sabato kwenda jumapili did not take place in bible times hali kutokea wakati wa maandiko ya biblia it took place gradually over centuries lilitendeka taratibu kwa karne kadhaa now in the bible encyclopedia sasa katika encyclopedia ya ki, ya, ki, ya kirumi dr john eddy uh, dr john eddy talks about the sabbath and sunday ananena juu ya sabato na jumapili and this is what he says na hiki ndicho asemacho sabbath sabbath a hebrew word signifying rest neno la kiebrania au la kiunani na maanisha pumziko la biblia sunday jumapili was the name given by the heathens to the first day of the week ni neno lililotolewa kwa ajili ya siku ya kwanza ya Jumapili ambayo ni kwa ajili ya siku ya kwanza ya Because it was the day that they worship the sun on. Kwa sababu wapagani walilitoa kwa sababu ni siku waliyomwamudu so Mungu jua. So you have two systems of worship. Hivyo zipo ni ipo mifumo miwili ya ibada. Worshiping the creator on the Sabbath. Mfumo mmoja unaomwabudu Muumba siku ya Sabato and worshiping the sun god on Sunday. Na mfumo wa pili unaowaabudu Mungu jua siku ya Jumapili. Now it was not until the 4th century. Sasa haikutokea sana mpaka karne ya 4 that the Roman Empire was being invaded. Pale ambapo utawala wa Kirumi ulikuwa ukivamiwa. It was being invaded by the pagans. Ulikuwa unavamiwa na kuingiwa sana na wapagani. They worship the sun god. Waliabudu Mungu jua. The pagan Roman Emperor Constantine na huyu falme wa ki wa kipagani Constantine along with the leaders of the Roman church pamoja na viongozi wa kanisa la Kirumi wanted to unite the empire walitaka kuunganisha ufalme so if they could get pagans hivyo wakataka kuwachukua wapagani Christians, na wa Kristo both honoring the sunday wote walioheshimu jumapili Constantine and church leaders Constantino na, na viongozi wa kika waliamini kwa njia hiyo angeunganisha ufalme so the first sunday law in history hivyo 
amri ya Jumapili ya kwanza katika historia was passed in the 4th century. Ilipitishwa katika karne ya 4. It was passed in AD 31. Ilipitishwa katika mwaka wa 331 baada. And here is what Constantine wrote. Hiki ndicho ambacho Constantine alisema. On the venerable day of the sun. Katika heshima kwa ajili ya jua. Let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest. Hebu wale wanaokaa katika miji na majiji wa And all the shops be closed. Na maduka yote yafungwe. Now many still kept the Bible Sabbath. Sasa wengi bado walikuwa kiadhimisha Biblia ya Sabato ya Biblia. In the days of Constantine. Katika siku za Constantino. Contrary to the Bible. Kinyume na Biblia. Church and state united. Kanisa na serikali viliungana. Now in the book The Catholic World katika kitabu kiitwacho Ulimwengu wa Kikatoliki written in March 1994 ambacho kiliandikwa huo mwaka wa mwezi wa Machi 1994 Catholic scholars write this wanazuoni wa Kikatoliki wanaandika hivi The Son Jua was a foremost god with heathenism alikuwa Mungu aliyependwa sana katika upagani There is in truth kuna ukweli something royal uh, kitu ambacho kilikuwa kikiendelea kingly about the sun kingly, kingly. Uh, ki, kitu ambacho kilikuwa cha kifalme juu ya making it the emblem of jesus ambacho kilikuwa kinaonesha kama vile ni kielelezo cha yesu hence the church in these countries na kwa sababu hiyo kanisa katika nchi hizi said this zilisema zili hivi keep the old pagan name Hebu tunza au endelea kuendeleza ile jina and let it remain consecrated na liache ile jina lifanywe wakfu and sanctified na litakaswe and the pagan sunday katika siku ya kipagani ya Jumapili this is what the catholic scholars said na hiki ndicho ambacho wanazuoni wa kikatoliki wanasema became wanasema. the christian sunday ikabadilishwa kuwa Jumapili ya Kikristo so how was the sabbath changed sasa sab- bato ilibadilishwa the bible predicted the change biblia ilitabiri badiliko it predicted it would come out of rome ilibadili ilibatabiri badiliko it predicted that it would be changed at a time of compromise ilibatabiriwa kwamba itabadilishwa wakati wa mapatano when church and state would unite wakati kanisa na serikali vingeungana that's why god is calling all christians today na ndio maana mungu anawaita wakristo zaidi leo back to keep being the bible sabbath wareje katika kutunza sabato ya biblia there was a church council kulikuwa na baraza la kikanisa called the council of laodicea ambalo lilifahamika kama kabaraza la laodikia it was convened by the church lilikusanywa lilitishwa na kanisa and it was the first council na lilikuwa baraza la kwanza to condemn those who kept the bible sabbath kuwa lilikuwa la kwanza kuwashutumu waliotunza sabato ya Biblia. The Bible says Biblia inasema Daniel 7 verse 25 Daniel 7 mstari wa 25 that an earthly power ya kwamba hii nguvu au mamlaka ya religious Biblia, political system ambayo ni muungano wa kidini na wa kisiasa in the early centuries katika hizo karne za awali would think to change God's law hata azimu kubadili sheria ya Mungu history tells us historia inatuambia that happened ya kwamba hilo lilimetokea. Let me tell you a little bit about my own life. Hebu niwaambie kidogo juu ya maisha yangu binafsi. I was brought up in a lovely Roman Catholic home. Nililelewa katika nyumba ya Kikatoliki. I was educated by the priests. Nilifundishwa na mapadri. I memorized much of the mass in Latin. Nili, nili kariri mambo mengi ambayo ni taratibu za kikanisa katika Kilatini. My father was a Protestant. Baba yangu alikuwa mprotestant. My mother was a Catholic. Mama yangu alikuwa mkatoliki. And you know it's a wonderful thing. Na unajua ni jambo la pekee la. They jambo. never argued over religion. Walikuwa hawabishani kama juu ya dini. I was brought up in a loving home. Nili lelewa katika nyumba yenye upendo. My father began studying the Bible. Baba akaanza kujifunza Biblia. He gave his life fully to Jesus. Akatoa maisha yake yote kwa Yesu. He believed Jesus was coming again. Akaamini Yesu anakuja tena. And dad discovered the Sabbath in the Bible. Na baba akagundua Sabato katika Biblia. This led him na hiki kilimngoza. To become a Seventh-day Adventist. Kuwa mwadventista wa Sabato. I was 
and God moved in his life. Na Mungu akafanya badiliko maishani mwake. I was 13 years old. Nilikuwa na umri wa miaka 13. And as I began to study the Bible. Na nilipoanza kujifunza Biblia. By the time I was 17. Nilipofikia umri wa miaka 17. I was asking questions. Nilikuwa nikiuliza maswali. And I read in the Catholic catechism. Na nilikuwa nimesoma kwenye katekisimu ya Kikatoliki. And I put it on the screen for you. Na naweza kuiweka kwenye viambaza kwa ajili yako. Here in the catechism. Katika katekisimu hii. It says this. Inasema hivi. Which is the sabbath day swali sabato siku ya sabato and here's what it says in the catholic catechism na hiki ndicho kisemwacho kilichoandikwa kwenye katekisimu ya katoliki if you can see the screen na kama unaiangalia read it from in swahili from the screen wale unaweza ukaisoma mwenyewe katika kiambaza kwa kiswahili read it together naweza mnaweza mkaisoma pamoja Saturday siku ya sa, au sabato is the sabbath day ni sabato siku ya jumamosi samahani ni this, sabato this is what it says in the catechism hiki ndicho isemwacho katika catechism then it says na kisha inasema why do we observe sunday instead of sabbath kwa nini sasa tunaabudu siku ya jumapili badala ya sabato and the catechism says catechism inajibu sasa because the catholic church transferred the day from saturday to sunday kwa sababu kanisa la kikatoliki lilihamisha sabato Here is a statement from the most authoritative book kutoka katika kitabu ambacho kina mamlaka sana the Catholic Encyclopedia katika encyclopedia ya kikatoliki this is what it says na hivi ndivyo isemavyo the church changed the sabbath from the seventh day to the first day kanisa lilibadilisha sabato kutoka siku ya saba kwenda siku ya kwanza you find that in the catechism unaliona hilo limeandikwa kwenye katekisimu you find it in the encyclopedia unaipata hiyo kwenye encyclopedia yao when i studied these things ninapojifunza I felt the Holy Spirit convicting my heart. Nilipojifunza nikajisikia Roho Mtakatifu akinisadikisha moyoni. I felt Jesus revealing his truth to me. Nikamsikia Yesu akifunua ukweli kwangu. And I said Jesus. Nikamwambia Yesu. You're calling me to make a step. Unaniita nichukue hatua. You're calling me to make a decision. Unaniita nifanye uamuzi. You're calling me to follow God's truth. Unaniita nifuate ukweli wa Mungu. I must step out and follow you. Lazima ni toke ni inuke na ni fuwa, ni so I made a decision hivyo nikafanya uamuzi kumfuata Yesu become part of the seventh day advent sabbath keeping body kuwa sehemu ya jumuiya ya Adventist wa sabato anayetunza sabato and when i walked into the water na nilipotembea na kuingia kwenye maji ili nibatizwe it was the joyous, joyous day of my life ilikuwa siku ya furaha kuliko zote maishani mwangu see here's the question sasa swali ni hili the question is not what difference does a day make swali si kwamba siku inafanya tofauti kubwa kiasi gani here is the question swali ni hili what is your guide wewe muongozo wako ni the bible or tradition ni biblia au ni mapokeo here is the question swali ni hili what has authority kitu gani chenye mamlaka zaidi the priests of the church je ni mapadri wa kanisa or jesus christ our lord au yesu kristo bwana wetu here is the question hapa ndipo swali hili can any human being Je, mwanadamu yeyote change the commandments of God. Alipata kubadilisha amri za Mungu. Written with the finger of God. Ambazo ziliandikwa kwa kidole cha Mungu. Tables of stone. Katika bamba za mawe. What do you think, Moana? Je, unafikiria nini? What do you think, Africa? Je, unafikiria nini Afrika? Can any human being? Je, kuna binadamu yeyote change the commandments of God? Awezaye kubadilisha amri za Mungu? What do you say? Je, unasemaje? Not at all. Haiwezekani hata kidogo. Jesus says. Yes, wanasema. Through David in the Psalms. Kupitia kwa Daudi alipoandika Zaburi. Zaburi ya 89 mstari wa 84. Jesus says this. Yes, wanasema. My covenant or my law I will not break. Anasema sheria amri zangu au sheria yangu sitavivunja. Nor alter or change a word that's gone out of my lips. Haiwezekani nikabadili God didn't change the Sabbath. Mungu akuibadilisha Sabato. Jesus didn't change the Sabbath. Yesu akuibadilisha Sabato. The disciples didn't change the Sabbath. Wanafunzi hawakuibadilisha Sabato. It was changed in those early centuries. Ilibadilishwa katika zile karne za awali. The Bible predicted the change. Biblia ilitabiri badiliko. And the Bible's calling us back. 
na Biblia inatuita tena to the sabbath given at creation to adam and eve kwa sabato ambayo ilitolewa kwa adam na hawa to the sabbath written with god's own finger on tables of stone kwa sabato ambayo iliandikwa kwa kidole cha mungu katika zile bamba za mawe the sabbath jesus christ himself kept kwa sabato ile ambayo Yesu Kristo mwenyewe aliishika the book of revelation kitabu cha ufunuo is calling christians kinaita wa Kristo saved by grace wanaokolewa kwa neema changed by love wanaobadilishwa kwa keeping the sabbath warudi na kuishika sabato revelation 14 verse 12 ufunuo 14 mstari wa 12 here is the patience of the saints hapa ndipo iliposubira ya watakatifu here are those that keep the commandments of god hao wazishikao amri za mungu here are those that have the faith of jesus nao ndio hawa walio na imani ya yesu how many of you have the faith of jesus tonight ni wangapi ambao mna imani ya yesu jioni ya leo jesus ambao mnamwamini Yesu. The faith of Jesus leads us to obedience. Imani ya Yesu inatuongoza katika utii. The grace of God. Neema ya Mungu leads us to keep the commandments of God. Inatuongoza katika kuzishika amri za Mungu. Here's what the issues are. Hapa ndipo maswala changamoto Will I follow the Bible or tradition? Je, unafuata Biblia au mapokeo? Will I follow Jesus? Je, nitamfuata Yesu? Or religious leaders? Au viongozi wa kidini? Will I follow God's law? Je, nitaifuata sheria ya Mungu or man's dogma au ma- mafundisho ya wanadamu will i god's instruction je nitafuata maelekezo ya Mungu or human teachings au mafundisho ya wanadamu will i follow god's way je nitafuata njia ya Mungu or man's way au njia ya watu joshua chapter 24 verse 15 says yoshua sura ya 24 mstari wa 14 inasema choose you this day who you'll serve chagueni hivi leo mtakaye mtumikia and let it be the lord na he, kam, em, kama ni Mungu Will you say with me today? Hebu kama unaweza ukasema nami leo. I will serve the Lord. Mimi nitamtumikia Mungu. Wherever you are tonight. Kokote ulipo jioni ya leo. Let's say it together. Hebu tuseme pamoja. I will serve the Lord. Nitamtumikia Bwana. Teach me. Nitamtumikia Bwana. Nitamtumikia. Nita mtumikia. Bwana. Amen. Nita matumakwia Bwana. Amen. I will serve the Lord. Nita mtumikia Bwana. My wife and I. Mke wangu nami. Got off the airplane in Chennai in India. Tulitoka katika ndege katika nchi katika sehemu ya India. To hold meetings like this. Ili kuendesha mikutano kama huu. In that great Hindu country. Katika ile sehemu nzuri ya Kihindi. It was not easy. Haikuwa rahisi. One of our pastors was putting up posters. Mmoja wa wachungaji wetu alikuwa ameweka matangazo. And a militant group beat him. Na mmoja wa wale wa kundi la wanajeshi wakampiga. They hit him in the face. Wakampiga usoni. They bloody his nose na kulikuwa na damu kwenye mguu wake broke his glasses wakavunja miwani yake they stamped on him when he was in the ground wakamkanyaga katika nchi when he, when he was taken to the hospital alipopelekwa hospitali another pastor said mchungaji mwingine akasema i will take his place nitachukua na tutashika sehemu yake and i will go out and put up the posters nitatoka na kuweka matangazo we had our meetings tukawa na mikutano hundreds and hundreds came mamia kwa mamia wakaja scores were baptized Me, watu wengi wakabadilishwa but i want to tell you about one lady lakini napenda niwaambie juu ya binti mmoja she was a business woman alikuwa mama She did not know Jesus. Alikuwa hamjui Yesu. She was a Chinese woman. Alikuwa kwa asili anatokea Uchina. Living in the city of Chennai in India. Akiishi katika jiji la Jinai pale India. She had no peace. Alikuwa mnene. Her heart was troubled. Alikuwa na shida ya moyo. She felt a sense of guilt because of her sins. Alikuwa na na hatia kwa sababu ya dhambi zake. There was an emptiness inside. Kulikuwa na shida ndani yake. And she said, "Jesus, na akasema yeye, yes. I don't know anything about the Bible. Sijui lolote juu ya Biblia. I've never read it before. Sijapata kuisoma kabla. But I'm going to start to read the Bible. Lakini nitaanza kuisoma Biblia. And I want your peace. Na ninataka amani yako. And Jesus, 
Yesu. Na Yesu. Whatever you tell me to do in the Bible. Chochote unachoniambia kukifanya kulingana na Biblia. I am going to do that. Nitakifanya hicho. As she read the Bible. Alipoisoma Biblia. She read about Jesus. Akasoma habari ya Yesu. She read the New Testament. Akasoma agano jipya. She read about Jesus forgiveness. Akasoma juu ya msamaha wa Yesu. She read about Jesus grace. Akajifunza, akasoma juu ya neema ya Yesu. Akaufungua moyo wake kwa Yesu. She had new peace. Akapata amani. New joy. Akapata furaha. New purpose in her life. She continued to read. She read that Jesus was coming again. She said, Jesus, I want to be ready. She continued to read. She read in Genesis. God blessed the Sabbath. God rested upon the Sabbath. God sanctified the Sabbath. She read in Exodus. That God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger. She, she read the passage, remember the Sabbath. She read that Jesus and the disciples kept the Sabbath. This woman got down on her knees. She said, Jesus, there's not probably one person in the world that keeps the Sabbath. I will be the first one. She didn't know Hakujua that there were 20 million Sabbath keeping Adventists around the world. Chennai in India is a city of 13 million people. She did not know one Adventist. But this godly woman said if I'm the only one in the world I must follow God if I'm the only one in the world nobody in my family keeps the Sabbath none of my relatives keep the Sabbath none of my village keeps the Sabbath I don't know anybody in this city for one year she kept the Bible Sabbath in her home. Thinking she was the only one in the world. When God calls you. When God calls you. Whether your husband does it. Whether your wife does it. Whether your children follow Jesus. Whether anybody else in your village does. God is calling you. You can be the example to your husband. You can be the example to your wife, to your children. My father stepped out for Christ. Eventually I was baptized. Eventually my mother was baptized. Eventually my sisters came to Jesus. God may be calling you as the witness to your family to your community to your village to your friends one day this woman in Chennai was walking down the street she saw a sign that said seventh day Adventist she said there are other Adventists she studied the Bible with Adventists. And she walked into the water. And I baptized her. Secretly. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God honored her faith. She stepped out to follow Jesus. God will honor your faith. Do you hear Jesus calling you tonight? Is Jesus calling you tonight? Is he 
calling you to follow him? Je, anakuita umfuate? Is he calling you to step out? Je, anakuita utoke? Is he calling you tonight? Je, anakuita jioni ya leo? This Bible Sabbath. Kuishika sabato yake ya Biblia. Is there somebody here tonight? Je, yupo mtu jioni ya leo? Are there hundreds here tonight? Je, wapo mamia jioni ya leo hapa? You want to say to Jesus? Ambao anataka kusema yes. I'm just learning about the Sabbath. Ninajifunza nimejua juu ya sabato. I've just learned it this last year. Nimejifunza tu mwaka uliopita. I've just learned it this last six months. Nimejifunza tu miezi sita iliyopita. In these meetings. But pastor, I'm raising my hand. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Would you stand together with me tonight? I want to pray. I want to pray. Is there somebody here tonight that God is touching your heart? God is calling you to step out. God is calling you to be baptized. And you want to come here for me to pray over you. God is talking to you. God is speaking to you. You've never made that decision before. But you say I want to follow Jesus. Who wants to follow Jesus? Wherever you are watching on television, if you want to follow Jesus, you come to the screen. You kneel in that marketplace. Pastors, you come. Come just now. Bible workers, you come. If you've never accepted Jesus, you come to the altar tonight. You come to to the altar tonight. If you've accepted Jesus and you drifted away, you come to the altar tonight. Come to the screen where you are tonight. If you want to look forward to baptism, you come tonight. We are going to sing. Let's sing. Just as I am. Wherever you are tonight, you come to Jesus. Jesus is talking to your heart. Jesus is speaking to your life. We're going to sing tonight. Just as I am, God is talking to you. You will be the witness to your family. You will be the witness to your son. You will be the witness to your daughter. You will be the witness to your friends. God is going to use you tonight. Let's sing together. You come as we sing. Kama tulivyo kama mkutano tuimbe pamoja ni twa hivi nilivyo ni twa e ni umebwaga damu yako na hivyo Bwana Yesu sasa Naja The power of God is going to come down on those that come if you want the power of God to come down upon you and you want to be baptized and follow Jesus you just come right now I'm going to pray over you we're going to sing and you come you may be way in the back wherever you are tonight just come quickly to the altar we will pray let God touch your heart let God move in your life God has a plan for your life when we come when we come we say Jesus I want to open my heart to you. Maybe you've drifted away from Jesus. This is the time to come back. We're going to sing and you come. Those that are here Let's sing together. 
Tunarudia itwaye hivi nilivyo Itwaye hivi nilivyo Umemwaga damu yako Still more are coming you come Many are coming here. On this side, many more are coming. You come. Jo tu. Jo, wimbo na pendelea tafadhali njo. Na. We're going to pray. Tunaomba sasa. But as just before I pray. Lakini kabla sijaomba. Many more are coming. Wengi zaidi wanakuja. Bring them. Bring them to be included in this prayer. Hebu tafadhali wahusishwe katika ombi hili. Anybody else on this side? Yeyote ambaye uko pande huu. God's moving in your life. Mungu anagusa maisha yako. You feel his Holy Spirit tugging you. Unasikia kitu roho wa Mungu anakusa. You want to come to Jesus? Unataka umjie Yesu. Just come. Hebu tafadhali mjoe. Any beats here on this side? Inawezekana ni upande huu. You're coming to Jesus. Unamjia Yesu sasa. You want to follow Jesus. Unataka kumfuata Yesu. You want to be baptized. Ili ubatizwe. You just come now. Tafadhali mjoe sasa. I'm going to pray over you right now. Nataka kuomba kwa ajili yako sasa. Many more are coming. Wengi zaidi wanaendelea kuja wape na We'll wait just a minute. Many more are coming. Wengine wanapoendelea kuja tafadhali wape nafasi. Some are coming here. Wengine wanakuja hapa kati. God often works in the quietness. Na wanapotembea katika ukimya huu. God often moves in the quietness. Mungu anatenda mara nyingi katika ukimya huu. We're going to pray. Tutaomba sasa. Oh my father. You know these men and women that have come forward. You know their names. You know their hearts. They want to step out to follow Jesus. They want to live for Jesus. They are committed to Jesus. They want to follow you all the way. They want to keep your commandments. They many want to be baptized. Father, thank you that you are working miracles in this place. May the power of God come down right now. Touch each one at the altar. Work deep in their hearts. Give them your grace where we need changes. We cannot change ourselves. Lord, those at this altar move upon them give them your strength may their lives be changed may they walk through that water and follow Jesus now and forever in Christ's name Amen